So here we are in 2024 with the Mac Mini M1 and the M1 MacBook Air and the question is should you consider them in 2024 even though they are three years old now. Hey what's up guys it's Joey here and I've been using the Mac Mini M1 since launch day and I recently added the M1 Air to my Mac lineup and in this video I would like to share my thoughts on the M1 chip in 2024 and I will also touch on why I chose the MacBook Air M1 instead of the MacBook Air M2. Alright, so first let's take a look at the devices that we got right here. Both products are base models. The Mac Mini M1 is 8 CPU, 8 GPU, 8 GB of RAM and base 256 GB storage variant. And the MacBook Air M1 has the same specs but only 7 GPU cores and no fan. Alright guys, let me give it to you straight. The Mac Mini M1 is the single best piece of tech I ever bought. It has all the ports I ever needed and no matter what task I threw at the M1 Mini, it handled it with ease. Games like Minecraft or Roblox run on full specs without making the M1 chip sweat. I have never seen the fans pushing past 2000 RPM unless I did so manually through an app, so it's absolutely quiet. The MacBook Air can handle the same games too, but it has no fan, so after a while the CPU has to throttle down the performance. But even when throttled down, the games are still running smooth with no drop FPS but we will get to the gaming part later in this video. Anyhow so recently I needed a new MacBook so I was looking into the MacBook Air M2, a gorgeous new looking tech but after comparing the prices I said no way, I mean how could I justify 300 bucks more for only a slight improvement in the M2 chip over the M1. According to Geekbench scores it's only like 13% faster and let me tell you the M1 is plenty powerful already. And then there is the storage situation with the read and write speeds. The base M2 model SSD is 50% slower than the SSD in the M1 MacBook Air. I mean, come on Apple, you want me to pay 300 bucks more and get a drop in storage performance? Alright, enough with the talking already and let me show you how the M1 machines perform in 2024. And let's start with a proper boot up test in 3, 2, 1. Okay, boot up was dead even in about 13 seconds, which shouldn't be a surprise as they are basically the same thing hardware wise. And software wise I have restored both Macs from the same time machine backup, so they have the same apps, same files on the disk and both are rocking the latest macOS Sonoma 14.2.1. Now let's try opening CapCut and see which one can load this app first. As you can see CapCut opens instantly on both devices with no lag and I have a short 4k project here that I'm going to export to test which Mac will export this video first. Let's go ahead and click export and the MacBook Air is not plugged into an outlet. It's powered purely by its battery and interestingly the MacBook Air is exporting this video very slowly and I think I know why. The Mac Mini doesn't have this problem at all 
and I believe it's because I'm screen recording on both devices at the same time. So let me cancel this and disable the screen recording. I think the MacBook Air prioritized screen recording since it's running on batteries. Okay now, with screen recording disabled, both devices are exporting the video quickly and equally fast. Next, let me open Roblox and this was fast on both. I won't be playing any games in Roblox as it's not possible with the same account on two different machines. However, let's hop into Minecraft and see which Mac can get us into the game first. I have the exact same copy of Minecraft Java on both machines. And again, both open the same world at the same time, so literally there's no difference. Okay, so let's roam the Minecraft world for a little bit. We are playing with the settings maxed out on Minecraft Java Edition and the Mac Mini M1 stays extremely cool. The temperature is around 50 degrees Celsius and the fans are barely spinning. All of this is happening with the screen recording on top of that. The M1 Air doesn't have a problem running Minecraft on full resolution either while doing the screen recording, but the temperature hits nearly 100 degrees Celsius. That's the downfall of having no fans, but despite the CPU running hot, the game is running flawlessly with very few to no frame drops. The same story unfolds when I launch the Cinebench Bench app. This app is designed to stress the CPU, GPU and everything in between. As you can see, the MacBook Air immediately hits 100 degrees Celsius in CPU temperature and the chip has to throttle down. Meanwhile, the Mac Mini M1 can run this test with temperatures half of that, so around 50 to 60 C. That's all good and expected given how compact the MacBook Air is is we can't blame the poor thing as it came fanless from the factory. Don't be afraid to go with the M1 chip even in 2024. I'm planning to keep my M1 Air for the next 3 to 4 years and once the battery will be on the way out, I will upgrade to whatever Apple has for me next. Alright, that's a wrap. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I'll catch you in the next one.